I'm going to tell you about Alex Goya, it's a story about determination and willpower and how a simple boy, village boy from Keragi in the simple province ended up in places like America, Japan, the United Kingdom and he's been working all around the world and he's an expert in his field. He's a petroleum uh, reservoir engineer, he's got a master's. Um, I just, his story encourages me because it just tells me a story of how his will and determination got him to school in Australia uh, through scholarships, then coming back to PNG, then got another scholarship, a million kina scholarship uh, to go to America and get his uh, degree in uh, petroleum mining. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Alex Gray. Alex, uh, thank you very much for joining us on uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I, the main thing is, I think your story will encourage a lot of young, especially simple boys and people in the village, wherever that you are in the highlands. Um, you know, if you have faith in yourself, I believe, I, I truly believe that you can go anywhere in the world, uh, you can do whatever you can do. Uh, before we start, Alex, I want to tell, uh, tell us where we were born and, uh, and uh, where you went to school as a kid. Yeah, thank you, Steve, for um, Ed, for interviewing me. I think it's an opportunity where it's good to share with a couple of our young um, young folks up there, the young boys and girls who are coming up and who have dream aspirations, maybe to travel the world and do whatever they want to do. I think it's, it's good, and thank you for giving me the time to share the story. Um, I was born in uh, in, in Morama, a small Seventh Day Adventist clinic in Karawagi, and basically uh, I, I grew up there and went to um, Karawagi Primary School, where I did my grade one to six, and uh, later moved on to uh, Karawagi uh, Secondary School, and that's where all my schooling was done up to grade ten in Karawagi. So that this this is my early days from grade, pretty much from grade one to ten in now, Chimbu. Now, did you have a silver spoon in your mouth? Did you have a uh, did you, how did you get to Australia? That's what I want to know. How did you get a scholarship in that came to school in St. Peter's? Oh, oh, thank you. I mean, uh, thanks for asking that. I mean, um, at the time, uh, there was ADEP scholarship around. But prior to that, what I did was, uh, when I was in year six, I told myself that I want to travel the world and I want to see a lot of different places. But in order to do that, I, I took a small pebble. It was a stone near Keragi Primary School. I buried the ground and told myself that the world we live in, the, the superpowers of the world that were known to me at the time were only United States, Japan, UK and Australia. So I told myself that if I am to go to school, I must go to Australia, but I'll have to get my first degree in the United States no matter what. Now, having said that as a kid, I had no means or no way of getting that money or scholarship. It was just faith. I had faith that one day that will happen. And, and as a result of that, when I was in um, Karaki High School around year eight, um, what happened was, and that's back uh, 1987, 86. And basically they mentioned that there was a scholarship by the Australian government they were gonna give to the top grade 10 students to come and study in Australia. That was because there was a shortage of secondary schools in Papua New Guinea. So it was a bridge that they were gonna do for five years. And once they mentioned that when I was in year eight, uh, back in 1987, I told myself, that's it, I'm going to get on that, so I started working towards it. Oh. Okay, so you, you, you obviously received a scholarship through your own merit, uh, and you came down to Australia and completed your grade 12. Yeah, correct. Um, what I did was, I studied so hard, you wouldn't believe it. So great. So basically I got ducks from grade 7 all the way to grade 10 at Karagi High School. So I was a I was duck student there. And you know, ducks, you, that's the ticket there. Take, take it out of Karaki. Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> correct, because there is no way. Yeah. Your, our parents did not have the money and everything. We are all back in the village. There is yeah. nothing. The only way was to get the ducks to get out. So, so I, I got that, the ducks, that, I did well, and they gave me the scholarship. And that's another thing. Um, he wanted it, so he went out and got it. He didn't wait for mommy and daddy to make it happen. He got the ducks, and he got the scholarship out of uh, Karaki, and he came to Australia. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's very inspiring, and... Um, I mean, did you have the self-belief and drive to do it? Yeah, basically, um, um, I would say, uh, first of all, I pray to God to give me strength 
And one of the motto that I had at the time was, uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Yeah. And I went to a practical skills les lesson and literally wrote it into a small piece of timber wood so I could have it on the wall all the time. And that really helped me and gave me the drive. But I think the first strength came from God. Yeah. And basically, I believe that whatever my dreams, aspirations are, and if I think about it, pray for it, God will make it happen for me. Wow. And then that, that's how it happened. That's awesome. And the um, other question is, uh, you said, I know for a fact that you were in, in, in a school in the States. Um, tell me how you got, how did a boy from Karawagi end up in the States? I mean, it must have cost a lot of money to get there. And I, 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 I was confused how you were there also when I was in the States. I was like, how did Alex Bear afford to pay for this university degree and everything? Yeah. That's a very interesting story, and I, I think that we all want to hear, hear about that. Yeah, no, basically... Um, when I finished from uh, St. Peter's Lutheran College in uh, Indrapilly, Brisbane, um, I went back and that was the end of scholarship. Um, I went back to do, um, I wanted to do medicine, so I got into medical medicine, which was Science Foundation was first. But my dream was to travel the world and uh, see so many places. But also my other dream, remember in primary school when I buried that rock, yeah. I told myself that I have to get a first degree in the United States, no matter what it is. So at the time, Around the time when I graduated, uh, when, I, when I finished around uh, from St. Peter's, around 1992, that's when Kudubu oil field came online as well. And that gave me the aspiration as well. And I told myself, if I am to go to the U.S., there has to be something I can do. And petroleum came on, line, came on board. Yeah. And around the time there was Desert Storm, the United States invaded yeah. Iraq. Iraq yeah. yeah, so the Desert Storm War. And I was wondering, why, what are these people fighting over? And they said, um, Look, they're fighting over oil, and all of a sudden it doomed on me that, I sorry, not doomed, dawned on me yeah. that uh, that oil was the um, was the currency of the world. It yeah. ruled the world, and I said I've got to get into it. Now, the only other way was to go to U.S. Now, how did I get there? The thing was, um, I applied to go to petroleum. I was accepted, but at that time, um, I did not have the money. So what I did was, um, I wrote to about 40 or 50 companies, and I told myself. I've got a willpower, so there has to be a way. Mm. So I kept going at it. I wrote 40 or 50 letters to so many different companies, even government organizations, even embassies to help me. No one came through. Rejection, yeah. Rejection, rejection. But I never gave up. The, yeah. the moral of the story is I never gave up. Yeah. For six months, I kept searching. I kept praying to God, God help me. But at the same time, I was doing Science Foundation at UPNG the first, first uh, few weeks yeah. as well. So I was in Port Mosby. Then one day, um, uh, a friend of mine took me to, um, to uh, Port Mosby, um, the Department of Petroleum Energy, and introduced me to the department there. I walked in, and there was a, a person there who said, we did not give scholarship, go away. I felt so upset that I walked from Port Mosby all the way to... Downtown. Yeah, downtown all the way to Morocco, where I spent the night with my uncle. And that night, I was so upset. And one of my other uncle, his name was David, he came and he saw me, and he said, Alex, what are you upset about? And I said... I'm upset because the lady said go away, mm -hmm. and they don't give scholarships. Ah, don't worry. I know, I know, I know the engineer there. I'll take you to the engineer so he can go and introduce you so you can see the boss. Yeah. So I told myself, yes, I will go and see the boss of the Department of Petroleum. At the time, what was a British guy named uh, Mick McWalter, okay. and uh, Mick McWalter was the director. So next day I went in. I said, Mick, I will not leave this place until I you tell me and you can help me. Mm -hmm. So I walked in and. Um, the moment I walked in, that was the pinnacle moment, you know. I had to make everything happen. So everything was very silent. So I went to him, and um, I was I could almost hear a fly. You know, I, I, hear, I was looking for pin every drop, yeah. pin drop, yeah, yeah, basically. I was looking for every word that might come out of his mouth. And all I did was, uh, 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 he asked me, he said, look, we do not give scholarships here, uh, but I like your, your aspiration and also the desire and you've been consistently pushing for this, and I can see the number of letters you have written, 40 or 50 letters. No young person has ever, has ever done that. How can I help you? That very moment, I said to Mick, I said, Mick, I'm just a small kid from the street, a young kid, just finished year 12. Nobody in the, in the oil and gas industry knows me. All I ask is that if you could talk to the oil and gas industry on my behalf, mm -hmm. and they might be able to help. But all I'm asking for is a scholarship or some sort of a scholarship fund that can be put together and I can go and get a, my petroleum engineering degree 
and I can come back and work with the petroleum. And he said, oh, that's a brilliant idea. I didn't think about that. Look, let's make it happen. Why not you write me a letter stating all these things and what you want to do and give it to me and I will forward it to a couple of oil companies I know. So I did that and I wrote, I wrote a letter. It was on a Friday and after a week later, he called me up to go to the office and he said, Alex, your idea worked and we were able to secure almost a million kina in funds and contributions from the oil company. You can go to school anywhere in the world. And I, I was out of breath. I was like, whoa, after six months, this has happened. I was so happy. I was so excited. I mean, I mean that's, that's everything else is history. And so I went to uh, the top petroleum engineering school in the world at the time. It was the University of Tulsa. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oklahoma in the United States. Wow. And, and, and there you go, guys. I mean, I know a lot of kids out there in Mosby now, and uh, especially in Papua New Guinea, we, you miss a waiting mama, papa, and you mean, we just, uh, our kids are not driven like they were, we were before. And this story has to drive you young people. Do not wait for handouts or wait for mommy and daddy to help you. Go out and get it if you really want it. I mean, that's very, uh, a very great uh, inspiration story. And uh, tell us a story of how you went to uh, get your master's in Scotland also. Yeah, so basically after I returned from the United States uh, with a Bachelor of Science in Petroleum Engineering and Mathematics, I, I contributed my service to, um, to the Department of Petroleum for so many years. And during the time I ended up in Japan doing a few studies and stuff, came back, and then I wanted to do masters. So it wasn't just any masters. I wanted to um, uh, do a something very specific. So it's called a Master of Science in Petroleum Reservoir Evaluation and Management. It was a unique course. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of universities around the world that offered it. So there was one called Eric Watt University in Scotland. And uh, I wanted to go there, but again, you need to apply for scholarship. Yeah. So what happened was um, World Bank had given scholarship at the time and I was making coffee for a, a gentleman. He was the director of the World Bank. I didn't know. And I was looking <laughs> after him. It's just like the universe and God brings everyone to you. Yeah, correct, and, correct. And, uh, it's just bending to your will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we also had a World Bank scholarship for the Department of Petroleum that was running, but they can only send one candidate at a time. Mm. At the time, I mentioned to the guy, hey, look, I want to study, do this master's. But I do not have a sponsor. You already got a, one guy already there on scholarship. And uh, the gentleman said, look, I've got the money here. All you need to do is talk to your boss directly and see what he says. I'm okay with it. And I was so happy. So I applied for it. And then they gave me the World Bank the scholarship to go to uh, Eric Watt. And that was uh, one of your dreams uh, when you were in grade five to, uh, when you planted stone, you wanted to go to the US, you did it. Australia, you did it. And now the United Kingdom. And uh, it happened. Yeah, correct. And it happened just yeah. like that. It and was you like see how God just brought the World Bank manager into your lap when you were giving him coffee. Yeah, <laughs> correct, correct. And uh, and uh, basically, um, it was also part of the petroleum as well, yeah. petroleum uh, department uh, scholarship program. But that, that happened so well, and um, and I'm really privileged and thankful to God that this opportunity did happen, and uh, and a lot of amazing experience while being in Scotland and gave me the opportunity to work up in North Sea and did some mapping of rocks in the central Spain area, mm. Europe, brilliant. Wow, oh, that's awesome. And, I mean, this is a simple boy from Kerawagi, has seen the world, and because he wanted to see the world, and uh, God made it happen. Uh, just everything aligned up for him. Um, lastly, what is the most, uh, what, what, what are you proud of? What, after being in the department, what, what contribution have you given back to Papua New Guinea? Uh, with your education, what have you given back that you are proud of? You can look back when you're old man and say, look, this is what I did for PNG and I'm happy. I did my yeah. part. Um, thank you for that. Um, on, on a couple of fronts, I think uh, the education that I got and the exposure helped me to do a lot of things. Uh, on the work front, a lot of things for the Department of Petroleum Energy. Uh, basically, um, one of the things I'm happy about is the, um, the, the current petroleum building that the Secretary occupies. It came out of just going to the airport and we saw a building there and just by talking to Mick McWalter at the time and we said look let's buy this building and put it there. It was just out of conversation we had an office come up mm. but in terms of improvement like that there's multiple. Mm. I even ended up setting up the first transportation system for going people going back and to from work as well. Okay. So that was just interviewing people and how much time productivity they lose by staying at the bus stop. Yeah. So I went around interviewing everybody and wrote a simple project proposal and got a finance department to fund it. So 
that the Federal Petroleum guys now do have a bus that drops them off. Yeah, the yeah, I see that. Bus. Yeah, and that's 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 my idea. I made okay. it happen for them. <laughs> but there are a few things like that. Uh, you mentioned something about the pop one guess. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. That that one as well. Also, there is a library that one I started yeah. for them as well. Before I left, I did the first website for the Department of Petroleum Energy. Okay. But the, the other greatest part of it was <coughs> basically bringing a couple of co companies called uh, Scotia, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. uh, Astro Pacific, help them to come in earlier so they can get licenses going. But one of the things I'm really proud of is the um, the Intel oil. Okay. Intel oil was a uh, uh, two guys who came from Canada. I think they were interested in gold. But at the same time, they were interested in oil as well, and they wrote the first letter one to the department, and they wanted some help. And I think we we spoke to them. Is that Phil Melchek? Yeah, yeah. It was um, it was uh, Phil Melchek. Uh, there was another guy, Vince Kristen. Okay. Vince Kristen. I, I don't know whether he's still there. It's mm -hmm. been a while. But he, him and a couple. Phil came a bit later, but uh, Vince Kristen was the guy. Yeah. And they came and they they wanted to um, to build a refinery. And we said, yeah, sure. And yeah. a couple of our DP boys, they drafted a letter inviting him. And uh, I think Tommy Thompson was the minister at the time and, and basically said, hey, look, come on in and let's do something. And gave him the introductory letter, welcoming letter. And he came in and, and I think used the letter to raise some money for Napa Napa Refinery. Okay. And then called the company Intel Oil. They get listed on Canadian stock market. And, mm -hmm. and then they applied for some licenses and everything else is, is free. And That's I think right. they sold it for a couple of billions of dollars to, uh, to Total recently, as we mm -hmm. know. And they made the biggest discovery, which is now going to be the second, the second LNG. LNG project, the Papua LNG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So elk cantaloupe and yeah. triceratops. That's, it wouldn't happen, but I'm, I'm really glad to be part of that. Yeah, part of that experience as well. Oh. At least yeah. you, you've given something back to PNG. Yeah, and when I came back, also we read the PDL5 license for uh, Chevron at the time, which mm -hmm. is now Moran Field. Okay. Help develop that, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. And that, that's what I gave back to PNG. And a lot more, but no, no, maybe no time to talk about it. I think we're running out of time, man. But uh, last, um, you are a specialist in underground reservoir gas, and Alex has some. Has some um, You've got some discoveries that are published um, that are in, in Australia. I'd just like to really go through that really quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I, when I came out, I realized that I, to, I need to sell myself as a specialist, as a petroleum reservoir uh, engineer. And when I came out, I worked for a company called True Energy, which is now Energy Australia. And uh, that is, um, and I did underground gas storage project. So right now we're taking gas out of the ground. But we want to now use it as a tank underground, you store gas underground. Yeah. And it's got big commercial values for big cities around the world. Yeah. So basically, you're storing gas, and we can talk about it another time. Yeah. It's an amazing uh, business concept. So you store gas, and at the same time, um, you um, withdraw gas so that um, to win when during certain times of the year, so you can double the money you make. Okay. And, um, and there's about six of them in Australia. I'm proud to say that um, six of them have designed them and actually delivered them for Australia. Oh, that's that's awesome! So, I'm really happy. <laughs> so there you that. go. Papua New Guinea designed the underground reservoir storage for Australians. So yeah, th there you go. That's for energy security, basically. Yeah. So let's say if a terrorist bombs a gas plant, maybe in Victoria, yeah. you got the underground gas storage to supply Melbourne City. Yeah. Keep going. And same thing here up in Queensland in Roma. Yeah. I did one up in Roma for Australia Gas Light Corporation (AGL) which is in operation now. Okay. So basically, a top ground storage would cost several billions. I do it underground for a few millions, Perfectly tens of millions. And that was your mod module and your um, president that now people follow? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So a couple of, the, couple of the new technologies and so on and design of, um, mm. I've, I've introduced those concepts. Because it was somewhere, somewhere new, yeah. so you've got to come up with yeah. something. So, so there you go. It's working well. I mean, this is a new concept. Uh, if you go under, I think, Google and Type his name, Alex Goya, uh, underground uh, gas reservoir. You'll yeah. see his work, and um, everything's referenced back to Alex. So it's yeah, it's, I'm proud as a Chimbo man and a Papua New Guinean that uh, one of our own brothers is in the forefront of underground gas reservoirs. Um, finally, um, I just want to ask Alex, uh, what is your advice, your last advice to all the young people out there? I know a lot of young boys these days. Uh, they're expecting handouts from mommy and daddy. They're not driven and they don't want to run out and do things for themselves. They just want to expect uh, Jesus Christ to come down and give you bread or wine. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I, I want to, your last message to the people, young men out there and women, I mean, 
you came from the village. A uh, lot of boys and girls in the city, they've got no excuse. They've got everything at their fingertips. They've got the internet, they've got everything. Mm-hmm. You basically, will and determination, and then God also put everyone in front of you in the right time at the right. I mean, if you look back in your life, God put every, everyone in front of you at the right time, and you did the right decision. And and I think we all we all I think a lot a lot of young people out there uh, can take some advice from you. Uh, what's your advice to young people these days? Whatever they want to do in life, what, what's your advice, Alex? Yeah. No, my, my my advice would be uh, in threefold. First of all, um, one is you believe in yourself. So what you want to do is you think of something that you really want to do in life, and you must believe in yourself and say I've this is what I want to do and you stick to it and the more you think about it and the more you plan and you pray about it basically the world the universe seem to align God makes incredible things align for you and you'll achieve the goals that you want to achieve and and and, and the other final one is that always pray to God and keep God in your prayers and uh, everything will line up as simple as that Thank you, Alex. Uh, I'm very in- encouraged and uh, uh, inspired because, you know, I get this a lot. A lot of kids don't know what to do with their life and they've got everything in front of them. Alex came up the hard way and now he's at the top of his field. Uh, it's a small field, but he's at the top of it. Uh, he created a new, I'm not a geologist, but it's an underground gas storage uh, engineer, like petroleum engineer. So it's, it's quite new. If you're encouraged by this, please click like subscribe put your comments below um search alex goya up uh google him you'll see what he's done and what work he's done and hopefully that inspires uh, many of you in the highlands or in the coastal areas manu sipik wherever you are in the village you can be whatever you want to do as long as you believe in yourself and start backing yourself knock on doors keep on knocking on doors till the door opens so not break it down so that's how you do it very uh happy to have you today alex and uh Have a good day.